Well, should we call African forms of Heidelbergensis Heidelbergensis? In 1921, again, at a mining operation, I think it was a copper mine, in what was then uh, Rhodesia, it was called Rhodesian Man, this beautiful cranium came out with classic Homo Heidelbergensis, strong brow ridges, very large internasal and in, inner orbital distance, large nasal opening, powerfully built cranium, uh, dated approximately at 300,000 years. It was from a particular site called Cobwe, and it's often referred to as uh, the Cobwe cranium, or at a specific spot called Broken Hill. So it's known as Rhodesian Man, Broken Hill, or Cobwe. And it was at one point called Homo rhodesiensis. Should these be a different species from the ones in Europe? They probably would never have come into contact. We don't know if they could have interbred, but they're so similar in their anatomy that they're all subsumed in this term, in this species Homo heidelbergensis. But I'm not quite certain that that is going to last. And here you see an interesting reconstruction of Rhodesian man. So uh, in Heidelbergensis, we've talked about a number of things. Here's a, a, a close-up, sort of a repeat of what I said in the previous slide, but you see the very large inner orbital distance compared to ours, which is much narrower. Uh, Heidelbergensis is also found in another part of Africa, but is indeed this really, should it be called Homo Heidelbergensis? It's from the central region of uh, Ethiopia, of, of the Afar Triangle in the Ethiopia, in the middle Awash area. It was found way back in 1976, just a couple of years after uh, the discovery of uh, Lucy in the Afar region, and is about 600,000 years old. So it's in that middle Pleistocene period we talked about. And it's got these very heavy brow ridges, it's got that low sort of uh, long cranium, very powerful face, huge nasal opening. We don't have a front view of it here. And uh, what's so fascinating about it is that much of the facial area and parts of the forehead contain clear incisions. And you see them, and I'm using that little needle just to point to those striations, those little grooves. And inside the orbit that houses the eye, you can see where a stone tool was used to remove that eyeball. And there are marks here on the forehead that suggest that this was scalped, as we would say. So again, evidence of some kind of defleshing going on. Were they eating this individual as food during maybe a period of starvation? Was it a ritual? Uh, we don't know, but clearly there's no question that this individual was purposely defleshed by another human being with a stone tool to take the skin and so on muscles off of this cranium. 